whatever I want for a full day. Today I read a quote that said I should live each day as though it were my last. So I made some funeral arrangements and then went to eat. I ordered a hummus with full egg and onions. The hummus was so rich and creamy and the food was hearty and savory. Next I went to a bakery and ordered a sambusak. I also ordered two bagels with salt to bring to my, I mean, to not bring to my friends. Both the sambusak and bagels were warm and crispy. The outer crust of the sambusak was flaky and buttery and the bagel was fresh and chewy with just the right amount of density. Do you have a few more seconds to spare? If so, let me tell you about the last food spot I visited. It was a barbecue restaurant. I just went straight inside and ordered some kebabs. When I tell you that those were some of the best kebabs I've ever eaten, I'm as serious as a dog. The kebabs were tender and each bite was smoky and juicy. Only eating at famous food spots for a full day. One of my viewers criticized me for using too many eye level words in my videos. That's simply not true. I replied to him that I was aghast, affronted and incensed and then I went to eat. I ordered a stunning Tunisian sandwich with all the good stuff like hot chili pepper paste, pickled lemon, tuna, olive salad and hard boiled eggs. The crispy fried bun was amazing, giving way to a burst of satisfying textures and tastes. Now a good friend of mine recommended that I eat a few plates of hummus full and masabaha at this restaurant. Honestly, the plates were kind of chewy and had an off taste flavor to them, so I'm not sure why my friend recommended them to me, yet in the end I decided to order hummus full and masabaka and they were amazing. The hummus was creamy and smooth and the fava beans were cooked to perfection. Of course I was extremely full at this point, so I went to this pizzeria and ordered a large anchovy pizza. The anchovies added this amazing salty ocean like burst of flavor that mixed so well with the tangy tomato sauce and melted cheese, plus the crust was perfectly chewy. I'm eating street food for a full day in an ultra-orthodox neighborhood. This time I went to eat in the most extreme area in the world. And I'm not talking about my dirty apartment. I'm talking about an ultra-orthodox neighborhood. I first went to one of the neighborhood's most famous bakeries and ordered some treats, a bagel and a pastry with cheese filling. The cheese pastry dough was soft and airy, with the sweet cheese inside being a flavor paradise, while the bagel was crispy and wonderfully chewy. The seller told me that after all those calories, I should consider a strict almond diet, but I decided that that's just nuts and went to eat some more. I got these beautiful burekas with lachuk and fenugreek and decided to eat them all in a park right next to the guy with a big horn. The burekas was crispy on the outside, yet delightfully soft inside, and oh, the lachuk, it was so tangy and spongy. Next, I I visited a restaurant slash deli and ordered some chulent with meat and potatoes. The chulent was steaming hot, the meat tender and juicy, and the potatoes were perfectly cooked. I'm eating bizarre street food for a full day. My friend told me that I gained too much weight from doing my food reviews. I told him that it happened by an accident and went to eat. I ordered mac and cheese inside the bun. The milk bun was soft and airy and the cheese was so creamy and rich. I loved those buns so much that I bought the entire menu and told the seller I had friends coming over. He doesn't need to know that the last time I shared food with a friend was when Napoleon was still alive. In the morning I wasn't hungry at all. I went to this grill restaurant and decided to just order a small portion of Worcester balls, some french fries, a tiny amount of hummus with mushrooms and a taboon bread, which is also small if you compare it to the size of a car. The Worcester balls were amazing. They were rich and slightly gamey. Lastly, I ordered a falafel made in a waffle machine and can you believe Believe it, the pita is actually made from falafel balls. It was so savory and the falafel balls paired perfectly with a fair flavorful falafel pita. Asian foods you have to try before you die. Today I read a book about the history of sticky rice that I couldn't seem to put down but eventually I managed to tear myself away from it and went to eat. So I went to this stunning Asian restaurant and ordered four Vietnamese spring rolls filled with chicken breast. The rice pepper wrap was so soft and the chicken breast was literally so juicy. It also had these crispy vegetables and silky glass noodles. And of course, I had to get sushi. I ate different kinds. One with red tuna, for example, and one with salmon and avocado. The red tuna was unbelievably fresh and had this rich buttery flavor that just creamed ocean. And the salmon was so silky and savory, perfectly balanced by the creamy ripe avocado. Next, I tried the chicken pad thai. Just look at those tender rice noodles that soak up this tangy, slightly sweet red tamarind sauce. I also love the soft omelette pieces and tofu which were perfectly fried and so crispy. What does $20 get you in Israel? I started off by getting a waffle, but I didn't want too much ice cream. Wait, that's actually really yummy. Then I went to a steakhouse, but the steak cost $30, so I bought pancake balls instead for $6. But let's just say that eating two desserts is way too sweet. But it was heaven, so I decided to eat something with meat instead, and I found a steak shop, but all the items were out of my budget. So I found another food spot in this indoor market 
an indoor market is like a regular market but inside the door and ate a meatball sandwich for seven dollars but I was still hungry and couldn't find anything for one dollar but at least it doesn't cost me anything to look at super cool crepes product? can you get with twenty dollars I started by getting a dish of small colorful crepes but I wanted one with ice cream that was actually really nice then I went to another dessert shop but they don't sell crepes so I bought an ice cream crepe for five dollars somewhere else instead but I wanted one with fruits inside so I went to a different place and I found a cool dessert shop but they just sell ice cream there so I looked at the chocolate fountain for one hour which was fun but the shop owner did ask me to leave but in the end I found a seven dollar food crepe which was really good but I only had one dollar left so I had to walk inside the mall until my bus arrived but at least I saw a guy there rolling a huge piece of dough which was free how much Japanese food can I get for twenty dollars I started by eating agadashi dofu no need to say bless you but thank you that was actually a beautiful dish but I also wanted to eat my brother's wife's dish which is called yakisoba but now she doesn't talk to me because she says she said no way ten times but I only heard her say it nine times so I ate a ramen dish instead but it was my brother's ramen so now he doesn't want to talk to me anymore so I had to leave the restaurant because of my brother but he was the one who was paying so of course I had to order the most expensive item on the menu it was a huge bowl of delicious ramen but I don't think that my brother and his wife are saluting me for ordering the most expensive ramen what does $50 get you in Israel? I started off by getting a Malabi and to wash it all down, a glass of Faluda. They were both so creamy and sweet, but I didn't want to consume too many calories, so I ate a very comforting flaky burekas with spinach, which has more calories, but I did feel stronger after eating it. So I also ordered a very small amount of flaky rich jachnun and warm spongy lachuk. I admit, they are not the most dietetic foods in the world. But they are yummy, and yes, I also ate a sandwich with an extremely tender and juicy schnitzel. It was insanely good, but I still felt hungry, so I ate two different types of kube, which were all so wonderfully crunchy and savory. But they did reduce my budget to zero, and because they only accept money in this market, I went on. What does $30 get you in Jerusalem? I started off by getting a malawach, but I didn't want too much butter and salt. Wait, that's actually really crispy. So I washed it all down with the glass of a trog juice, but it was so bitter. Instead, I bought a sweet knafe, but let's just say that eating knafe after drinking a trog juice is like jumping on a bicycle when the seat is missing, which I do like. But I went to eat caviar instead. I found an expensive fish restaurant that sells it, but all the items there were too expensive and made with eggs, so I ate burekas instead. Does $30 get you in Jerusalem? I started off by getting bread with butter, but I didn't want to eat too many carbs. Wait, this cheese shop is absolutely amazing. So I ordered some pita with za'atar, but it felt like eating a garden. So I bought a pizza instead. But let's just say eating all this dough made me look extremely fat. Yeah, I reminded myself of my girlfriend from high school, all right. But I did want something with fewer calories instead. So I ate some hummus with falafel balls. And next to those balls, I ate my culinary match. Sweet. What does $40 get you in Nazareth? I started off by getting fatayer, but I didn't want too much salt. Wow, that was so rich and warm. So I looked for something sweet. No, not that. And ordered some dried fruit and candies, but it was so chewy and tangy. So I bought a pita with masabacha and a falafel bowl instead. But now I felt brave, so I decided to order a huge tabun bread with laban and zatar. It was so crispy and tangy, but I wanted something that tastes less like a salty pizza and more like a pizza that had an accident with the honey truck. So I ate some sweet knafe, and next to the knafe I ate my number one dessert in the whole wide world. I won't say spaghetti with chocolate because I know you think I'm going to say that, but it's actually Malabi. Does $35 get you in Safed? I started off by getting a lachuch, but it was so warm and spongy. Wow, that was so good. So I looked for something refreshing to wash it all down. So I ordered a glass of pomegranate juice. It was so good, but not to the point where it made me want to just sit on a couch. So I ate cheese and halva instead. But since cheese and sandwiches go hand in hand, I also ate a Tunisian sandwich, which was sour, similar to the salty bagel with sesame, zatar, and labane that I ate, which was good, but not so good that it made me want to play my guitar without enjoying a nice glass of what does $20 get you in Nebrak? I started off by getting some tuna and salads, but the tuna was so buttery. Wow, that was so salty. But it was so cold and I wanted something hot. So I found some chulen right next to the guy carrying a big couch on his back. It was great, but I did want something sweet. So I ate kuga instead, but it has a lot of calories and I'm always looking to eat less calories. But because I know I always fail, I ate rogalach instead, which was sweet, but not so sweet that it made me want to skip a perfectly good sweet halal.
What does $51 get you in Tel Aviv? I started off by ordering a hamburger and fries, but I got the children's size meal and I was so hungry. Wait, that's actually really juicy. So I ordered a pizza instead, but it was so hot that it burned my tongue, so I had to order ice cream. But let's just say that eating ice cream after eating pizza felt like being run over by a cow, which I do like. And I also liked the crack pie I ate, but because the price didn't include therapy and I felt like I was being watched, I ate a repas instead. What does $22 get you in Haifa? I started off by getting some free sweets, but I didn't want too much sweetness. Wait, that was actually really yummy. So I washed it all down with a shot of tahini, but it was so salty, but it was free, so it was the best. But I did buy baklava and also knafe. It was so sweet, irresistible and crisp to perfection. Pretty much like me in high school. I also bought hummus, a pita filled with 20 falafel balls, various treats, and of course, a dinosaur. Just kidding, of course, about having 20 falafel balls in my pita, but nothing beats drinking the best coffee in the world. Oh, I actually never left my country. All eating at recommended street food spots for a full day. This time I wanted to start with something salty, but I ended up ordering a knafe. I also ordered an incredible baklava just to make sure that I have enough sugar in my meal. So they have these sweet, nutty and rich flavors and they are warm and gooey. And then I had to go eat something with meat inside. My plan was just to order a hamburger, but I ended up ordering fries as well. As I always say, it is better to be with fries than sorry. But the fries were crisp with a fluffy cloud-like interior and the burger was extremely juicy with tender meat. And then I saw this unique dish called Shamburak and I felt a bit ashamed for not trying it before. I thought it was funny to say the word shame after Shamburak, but never mind about that now. But it was worth it. Perfectly seasoned savory meat with onions that added a touch of sweetness and its exterior was so crisp. Everything I ate in an Alice in Wonderland restaurant. I started off by ordering a veal tartare, but it melted so fast in my mouth. So then I saw these beautiful cocktails, but even though I didn't drink them, I still found myself in this stunning bathroom. But then I took a picture of myself with this strange device. That was cool. Of course, I had to order a yummy sirloin steak, and my friend ordered this crispy octopus, which looked so good in the Instagram photo that he just had to try it out. But then he saw this goose breast that comes with a cherry, and he said it was incredible. I also had this tree dessert, but nothing beats going to the restaurant's prison and talking to the rabbit guard. What does $19 get you in Jerusalem? I started off by getting an egg roll, but I didn't want too much salt. Wait, that's actually really yummy. So I went to eat buecas, but it has too many calories. So instead, I bought a beautiful knafe. But let's just say that if you're thinking about losing weight, eating an egg roll, buecas and knafe might not be the best way to go about it. But I will start my diet next week, so that's okay. But then I got some free corn, cabbage and grape leaves, which means not a lot of calories, so I'm already losing weight. Everything I ate in immigrant restaurants in Tel Aviv. I first went to an Indian restaurant that served Pani Puri, but I didn't want too many carbs in my diet. But wow, what a burst of sweet, sour and spicy flavors. But then I went to a Chinese restaurant and ate dumplings. They were so juicy and tender, but they had too many calories, so I bought an Ethiopian injera instead, which was so soft and spongy. Yeah, it reminded me of myself in high school, alright. But then I found a Sudanese restaurant and ordered kisara and asida, but they were all made of dough, so I ate this amazing Filipino alo alo dessert instead. Only eating in Tel Aviv for a full day. Firstly, I went to an Ethiopian restaurant and ordered injera. I received an amazing explanation about each stew that comes with it. So after two hours of talking, and once I regained my composure, I enjoyed injeras amazing tangy and sour flavor. But wait, there's more. Next, I went to a Yevanai restaurant and ordered a pita called Saluf, which tasted exactly like Iraqi flatbread. Then I saw a Georgian restaurant and ordered a stuffed pie called Pelovani. It had amazing cheese inside and was salty, but I wanted to eat more, so I found a Thai restaurant that sells papaya salad, which was sweet and refreshing. But for me, nothing beats a great Malabi. Everything I ate in Nebrak. I started off by getting a kugel, but it was so sweet it felt like eating dessert. So I decided to eat something salty. I had gefilte fish, which was tender and moist, and another fish that was salty and wonderful, kind of like the poco and bexa so nearby. But instead, I ordered a warm and savory chulen at a restaurant I spotted. If you are anything like me and always feel like you want to conquer the world after eating chulen, you'll simply adore the amazing treat I have for you next apple strudel. It was such an amazing pastry with a crisp exterior that gave way to the warm spiced apple filling inside.